Hey guys, it's a hot Arizona summer. I'm already burning up, so I'm standing in front of the fan. So if you hear air, that's why. Um, it's still morning. It's about 10 o'clock, but it's in the 90s and fastly reaching the triple digits. So I'm going to, actually it's not summer, is it? Still spring, feels like summer. Um, I'm gonna do a quick recipe because I don't wanna be in the kitchen too long, but, um, and I definitely don't want the oven on. So today we are making delicious, nutritious, low carb, keto friendly fried cabbage. So what you're gonna need, you're gonna need one large onion. I got one head of cabbage, which I have already washed and cored, one clove, one uh, garlic bulb, and one pack of thick sliced bacon. That's it. Of course, you're gonna need your seasoned cast iron skillet. All right, first I'm gonna start with my bacon here. Let's see, I'm sure there's an easier way to open it, but I'm gonna cut right inside here. Put my bacon out, and I wanna cut that into smaller bite-sized pieces. Probably like one inch, I guess. And this is a flavor preference. I mean, it's basically for flavor, but if you wanna cut back on fat, you don't have to use the whole thing. I'm only gonna use half of this uh, slab of bacon here because I like the bacon flavor. I don't need all the extra fat. So. Mm, one more and I'll be good. Okay. That's good enough. And these are still big enough. I can fry them up and make a BLT or something at a later time. So yeah, I got all my bacon. I'm gonna put that in my skillet to fry. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna dice my onions. Throw those over there. With my onion. And this is a really big onion, so I'm probably only gonna use one head, I mean half of it, because my head of cabbage is not that big. So I don't need a lot of onion. Again, it's a flavor preference. If you're an onion lover, which I am, I put more. If you are not an onion lover, you can omit the onion altogether and just use a, a maybe an onion powder or seasoning just lightly because I don't know. Some people just don't like the flavor. You can leave it out. You don't have to use any seasoning for it. I personally love onion. And push that to the side there. So my bacon is ready for it. It's over there sizzling. I'm going to start opening my garlic cloves. If you're not familiar with how to do these garlic, this is how I do it. There is no rhyme or reason. On the bottom, there's this hard piece. So I remove that little piece and then I smash it with my knife and then it just basically slides out at that point. It's easier to get the skin off. It just all slides out of the skin. So to me, that's the easiest way to remove the skin. You see the little bottom hard piece, you cut that off, press it with your knife, and it just basically falls out of the skin. So that's how I de-skin my garlic. I'm not sure how other people do it. Basically, slide it right out of the skin. Remove the bottom piece, press down with your knife, and then slide it right out of the skin. Ta-da! See that? Easy peasy. Then you can dice that up when you're done. Okay, once you have de-skinned as much garlic as you like for your flavor preference, I just do a rough chop. I'm not going to, of course, because like I do like the garlic flavor, I do like pieces in my food, so I'm not chopping it super small. 
just a nice rough top to get that flavor release into my food. Okay. Now, my bacon, on the other hand, is ready. Okay, so it's nice and brown. I like it to be a little bit crispy. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my onion. I'm going to add my garlic. And mix that. And then I'm going to cook this until my onions are translucent. While it's cooking, I'm going to rinse off my cutting board and chop my cabbage. Now these aromas are delicious. As far as chopping the cabbage, I'm just going to cut them in about, I don't know, I'm going to go in squares. I like one inch pieces. It cooks faster, so I cut it along the long way. I'm going to let you guys have a look at that. See? And now I'm going to turn it and cut it this way, about the same amount. So my pieces are about that big. Give it a little stir so it doesn't burn. one cabbage head kind of goes a long way. It doesn't have to be a really large one. This is about a medium sized one. Depending on how many people you're serving will determine how big of a cabbage head you want or how many cabbage heads you want. You can do this in a very large pot if you were doing like a, you know, a big batch for a, a holiday meal or a family gathering. Okay, cabbage is all chopped. As soon as those onions are translucent there, let's give it a one look. Let's see how they look. Yep, they're just about there, just about. There's still a few spots. If I translucent, this is translucent, where you can just about see through the onion. So, they're just about all translucent. Okay, I'm going to clear the middle here. So we have all the baking grease in there. I am going to still add a spoon of butter. Now you can leave that out. Again, you're counting your calories. I use real butter, not margarine. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour my cabbage in. I'm going to do about half and stir that in and then do the other half. So that my pan's not over full. So the whole time I'm cooking this, it is on high. The burner's on high. So it's a fast cooking type of a recipe here. 
You can see as your cabbage starts to wilt, so you can go ahead and add a little bit more. Starts to break down a little bit from the heat. See, there is plenty of bacon in there. But like I said, if you prefer more um, meat, you can add the whole um, packet. It's up to you. And I got it all in. Ta -da! A good stir frying. I am going to add pork, uh, ground black pepper. I'm going to add my Himalayan pink sea salt. And that's ground also. And of course, again, it's season and taste. If you're on a low sodium diet, you can reduce the uh, bacon. You can get uncured bacon. You can not use salt. You can use Mrs. Dash, whatever your preference is. And I have a spicy palate. So I'm going to add a little crushed red chili peppers. I'm going to go ahead and stir all the seasonings in here. Once you stir that in, the very last thing is I add a half cup of water. And I cover it and I let it steam for 10 minutes. All right, so halfway through my 10 minute timer, I'm gonna give it a stir just to make sure it's not sticking on the bottom. And it's not, it's looking deep. Delicious. Now, if you like your vegetables a little al dente, which I do, this is a good place where you can just stop. If you want it a little more tender and cooked, cover it and continue to let it steam for the additional five minutes. All right. She's ready to turn my eye off. One last stir, and oh my, my. I wish you could smell this, it is so yummy. And we'll get a big serving, and like I said, you can see there is lots of bacon in here. Plenty of bacon. If you're a bacon lover, as I am, Time to taste. Test. Mm, it's very soft. Tender. It's hot. Better blow it. Mmm. It's also super juicy. Yeah. The was bacon. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. Bacon. Bacon's tender. 
The cabbage is juicy. The flavors just mixed together. I feel like I'm eating healthy, but also unhealthy at the same time. It's keto friendly. Keep this all day. Mm. All right, there you have it. Give it a try, y'all. Let me know what you think. It is, like I said, keto friendly. Yeah, it has a little after bite because I put red chili. Ooh. I like spicy. It's very juicy. What do you think? It mixed very well. Well, she's still eating. Must be good. There you go. Vegetables for kids. Kid-friendly vegetables.